So one of the things, there's also, I guess, um, a hackathon later today at 6 p.m. I'm not sure which room, but uh, you can ask me, I guess, afterwards. Uh, right next door. Baby A. Even better, right next door. Uh, so at that point, uh, I wanna do some, we want to do some brainstorming and actually start maybe, uh, you know, I mean, we took us probably a couple of weeks uh, to implement the AWS uh, CPI, maybe three weeks to be fair. Um, but I think a lot of those things are very similar to the, the challenges we're going to hit trying to implement the OpenStack one. I think, uh, as you saw in the CPI, at least it should be pretty straightforward. I think some of the challenges are going to be more on the creating the stem cell and so on. But um, here are some links in terms of our mailing list. Um, if you have any bugs you want to follow, you can, uh, go right ahead. And then also our source, again, everything that I just showed today, it's in our GitHub repo. Uh, if you want to submit any contributions, we have a simple uh, CLA process, and also we use Garrett uh, for our. Uh, our code process. So that's pretty much it. And I, so I kind of the last part of this, either we can start you know, having a Q&A session or we can actually go and start looking at some of the code. It's up to you guys. Questions? Questions? Perfect. So, I have so, I mean, Cloud Foundry, I mean, that's a good question. So, the question is why can't Cloud Foundry deploy Cloud Foundry? Right? So, I mean, so Cloud Foundry is, was designed from the very beginning to be completely agnostic from the layer that it's running on. Right? So, it doesn't know that it's running on vSphere or AWS or whatnot. It doesn't actually have any hooks in the system to, to do that. Uh, Cloud Foundry is a, <coughs> if you look at all the, I mean, architecture, I don't know if I have a, a deck with me, but it, it's fully focused on providing a very uh, polyglot environment for deploying various run times frameworks consuming many types of databases, um, services, and, and so on, in a very, uh, I guess, simple way as well. So it doesn't focus on actually when it comes to provisioning components, provisioning packages. So when we went down that path, um, I think probably seven or eight months into it, we realized we really needed something to go and deploy the system. And building it in, into Cloud Foundry was an option, but when we looked at Cloud Foundry today, I mean, it's 45, maybe even 50 uh, distinct components, starting again from manifest servers to uh, MySQL, Postgres, uh, uh, Rather than Mongo, and we have almost every kind of service in the system. We have almost every kind of application server in there. So, it, I mean, Cloud Foundry is a really uh, complex distributed system and large distributed system. So, it ended up build, building Bosch. Our goal was not to build a generic system, but just because we were deploying Cloud Foundry, it became a generic system. Okay, a lot of the services that Bosch are providing would be useful for applications as well. So, if I want versioning and upgrades my application, should I say Cloud Foundry is better, should I use Bosch? No, I mean, they're, they're two different. Okay, so there are two different things. So we, we did, most of our apps, we actually, like for Cloud Foundry itself, we actually deploy on Cloud Foundry. So like the www.cloudfoundry.com and all the other apps that we deploy are actually deployed on Cloud Foundry itself. So this is one, one layer below that. So this is basically managing VMs at a very low level, but me as a developer, when I'm running a simple, not even simple, but even a complicated Ruby or Node or Java app, I actually don't want to deal with most of the stuff in here, right? I don't want to deal with VLANs, I don't want to deal with you know, provisioning this. I just want to say I want to deploy my Java application, right? And I want to consume a Mongo database and I want to consume a Postgres database, right? I don't care about like 99% of, I mean, the audience I think is very, very different, right? Other people who are consuming a platform as a service are you know, one, one layer above. This is for deploying things like a, a platform as a service, or deploying other distributed systems, like Hadoop and so on. Do you have a demo? You have a version that you can show us with OpenStack on the product. So the OpenStack, we have not implemented the OpenStack CPI. So the goal of the, the hackathon later today was basically starting that work and basically seeing how far we can get to, to implement that. Okay. So did you do an AWS one? Or? Yeah, so uh, yeah, the AWS is checked in. You can actually take a look at it. Um, uh, like I said earlier, Dr. Nick uh, actually had a great screencast of recently how to do the whole thing. He has a nice little demo of from starting from nowhere. I mean, he kind of skips some Explanation. So, but uh, if you follow the steps, you will actually get uh, this deployed in no time. So, does Cloud Foundry ever start instances? <coughs> Cloud Foundry does not start VMs. So, Cloud Foundry today is provisioned fully statically by Bosch. So, we have a lot of Slack capacity, and then whenever you deploy your application, we just consume some of the capacity. And you stop your application, the capacity comes back into the pool. Which app? Not Cloud Foundry. The application on top. Correct. So, let's say um, I have. The no chat app, and so you know, a lot of people like to deploy that app to uh, Cloud Foundry. When I do a VMC course, again, VMC is the Cloud Foundry command line for uh, for deploying apps. Uh, it goes into the Cloud Controller. The cloud Controller is very, yeah, sorry, I'm confusing. So Cloud Foundry has an existing pool of VMs. Correct. It's, it's, 
distributing your workload across those VMs, but it can't it doesn't necessarily ever start. He does not start, it doesn't delete, it doesn't do anything with it. So one of the things, I, I mean, I, just to, to follow on what Justin's asking, I, think, I feel like there is an unnatural separation in some of this, and a lot of the things that you want in, in terms of lifecycle management, you also want that to be part of your task. Right, it, it also, like, this is technically like infrastructure orchestration, whereas the other is past, but the, the line between why you want one and the other, if you decide if you're permitting a doctor, you may want one control as you start seeing that. And then you get to the well, I, I don't think that's the case. I, I really think that, at least from, from my perspective, is uh, I would, as a developer, I would try to deploy everything I can on Cloud Foundry. Okay? Why? Because the experience is much more simple. You don't have to worry about like the half the things that I mentioned here. Like most developers, if you tell them to go configure VLANs when they want to deploy their Tomcat application, they're not going to they're not going to understand that you know, connection. They just they care about just the WAR file. They don't really care about you know. But and is that then providing porcelain on top of the launch API? Well, I mean, well, we, I mean, that's what we think. I mean, in reality, Cloud Foundry is basically a way to simplify now worrying about the underlying infrastructure and the consuming resources on top of it. So, is there, do you think that you get the two projects combined? Or? I mean, it's combined in our deployed system. So, I mean, for our host solution, we use Bosch to deploy Cloud Foundry, but we don't expose Bosch to our end users. Is it going to be kicked off by the end users putting load on their application and causing auto scaling? So you, instead of Slack capacity. So, so you have some set capacity that is your cloud boundary, no matter who you are, right? So, and then that is where the kind of the boundary, whatever that, that platform is, right. is, in terms of what can you consume. Right. Can we, we don't want to do, so one of the things, I don't want to, when a user does a VNC push to deploy their whatever app, I don't want that to kick off an infrastructure call, right? I mean, with the infrastructure, whenever we do deployments, I mean, there's a lot of air rates, we do we do things that we run out of capacity if we don't do proper capacity planning and so on. So for us, we manage our capacity a lot more statically than, you know, some of other kinds of stuff. So I have a few questions. Um, the stem cell idea, what's in the stem cell? Is it just simply this agent, or is there anything else? Uh, it's the agent in very, very primitive tools. So we have, so we use Ubuntu, so there's global essentials, uh, and maybe like a little bit small. So, so then why require this image? Why not just bootstrap the, the, the deployment that you on onto this onto my new system? What do you can you elaborate? Uh, like you're you're requiring the bundling of an image. Yeah. Where like you could just install the image, right? Sure. Right. So from our point of view, like whether we upload a raw image into an environment and we basically do that versus creating a new image, basically consuming a template from the environment and basically installing the agent in there. And then basically creating a couple of there, it's no good. The stem cell is the equivalent of Navi. You have to boot, it, boot the VM off something. Sure. So the stem cells will be booted off. But even, even like you, you can just boot a bunch of VMs and then bootstrap the agents. Like you don't, you don't the requirement to have uh, a stem cell is, doesn't seem like it's a true requirement. It, it's not, I understand what you're saying. So it, yeah. well, like, from our perspective, we really just wanted to have one tool. That, so we don't actually, like we don't want to have another tool that yet goes into provision of those VMs. So we want to have one thing that think is bootstrap itself, right? And you, you keep saying you don't want one tool, but you have separated cloud boundary too, so it's like self so you, you have a tool to deploy a service, yep. that's a tool to deploy services, right? Like that's what that's what we're talking about. Well again, yeah, cloud boundary is a is a large distributed system. I mean let, let's just replace cloud boundary <coughs> with like Hadoop, for instance, right? It's sure. so different than any other large distributed system, right? Uh, it, it's like saying you should go and create VMs on its own. I'm not even seeing that now. How do you get the agent onto the VM? How do I get on the VM? Yeah. I mean, you have to have the agent on the VM. Yeah. 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 Ye
from our own internal things that we're exploring, we may be moving out and trying to look at other supervisors or other uh, monitoring solutions. Uh, but even with mine, well, I'm not even talking about so. So you'd have you put the canary out there. Right. There there be uh, scenarios where I want those first canaries mm -hmm. to go through a little bit more for whatever the standard monitoring is. Yep. So maybe there's like some way to capture that as a fund that I put these out there and then do these extra things so that I can make sure that it's all patient before I roll out the rest. That's a great. No, 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 that's a great. So we haven't done that yet, but that, that, that's how we're going to actually. Like that control circle is going to be like a normal way. Uh, I agree. Uh, that's a great idea. Uh, what did the current state for bucket allow the deployment to if any growth or bonds? So we, I mean, we actually do want to integrate with the chef and bucket and other at least configuration management systems. When it comes down to other sauce or shell strips, they're not very pretty or uh, manageable for that. Uh, but we do want one holistic solution for basically building the releases. And at least at the time when we built this tool, which was over 18 months ago. So we've been actually using Bosch for the last 18 months to actually deploy the hosted service on Cloudflare. Um, and we really could not find a solution that actually does all the release engineering, all the way to updating the, the wall system and understanding all the service intricacies in terms of you know, training the connections and doing all the other components. So if they're out there, we we're just not aware of them. But when it comes specifically to Pop and Chef, we actually do want to integrate with them specifically for like the DSLs and both of the solutions to uh, replace some of the shell strips. Uh, yeah, so, um, looks like there are two parts of Bosch. One, deciding that many of us need to work with an entire network that comes on deploying WordPress and all the other end is talking to an IAS layer. Uh, somehow seems like they should be two parts of the cloud foundry system. And it cannot be like, put all together in a single thing. Cloud foundry is a, a, a path layer somewhere in between software as a service and IAS. I think that's the way that the models are not true. So why is CPI under a bar should it be like something more native to cloud foundry? Uh, so I think that goes back to the earlier conversation. So we, we the way we manage our our capacity is fully stacked, right? So we basically understand our user growth rate. We understand how many apps people are deploying. Even that side of the future, uh, that seems to go against the notion of cloud, right? Why should it be a static thing? If it's, if it's static, I wouldn't go to Amazon. And you want to take the Sure. So this uh, stays take Microsoft Azure. So we have a part of Cloud 9 IE deploys apps to Azure, which does completely, it does all the steps. Like when you give it an app, it deploys everything sequentially and it does all that. It takes seven and a half minutes to deploy all of one node app to Azure. If you try that on Cloud Foundry, it's not the configure, it takes 15 seconds. Because everything's waiting for you as a developer. It's, it's all hot and ready to go. It seems, I agree that it takes time to deploy, but the point of Cloud is it's something which can grow. But it's, that's how we consume it though, right? So our operations <coughs> team consumes it as a cloud. So like we, we see our capacity grow, but at the end of the day, we actually do have to manage capacity. Whether it's your private cloud or it's Amazon, you might have to give Amazon a call and say, please increase my instances. I mean, that is a, a, an actual friction point that you have to do. Whether it's your private cloud, you have to call your data center operations and ask for the rack or the racks in the data center. That is something. Sorry, the only thing I'm trying to point out is like, as a cloud platform, like, we cannot make those assumptions. So I don't know how much of that assumption is going into Bosch to say that I have a fixed pool of things to work with, and I'm going to make it better to put it there. But that's part of the but it's for that one deployment, right? In the next deployment, you need to increase all those things. You basically change the number of instances from 10 to 20. And now you've scaled up from 10 to 20, right? That goes back to the whole idea of cloud. Scale up and scale down. Well, some of there's some in the middle. So, I mean, it, it's really, I mean, for my background, I mean, I spent over four years at Google. Everyone, no matter how big or small, does capacity planning at some point, right? So, when you launch a new service, you over provision, I mean, you over allocate by quite a bit, basically, because you don't understand what the initial launch capacity is going to be. So, I mean, I, don't, I can't really disclose the initial numbers, but we've over allocated quite a bit, or I guess over provisioned quite a bit. Um, 
go to the very end once you get a more mature system, you can actually look at your numbers. And I mean, if someone comes to the door and says, I want to consume, you know, 100,000 instances and you're going to be running at you know, 50,000, I mean, sure, you're going to start basically without you know, having the capacity to meet the demands. But again, it's no different than an infrastructure service provider uh, not having the enough capacity. I mean, they have to be capacity depending on the bare metal you know, before you know, they provide the service to you. So, Okay, so I think last question. Final question, so is, is this DPI sort of an extension to what's already on the cloud foundry or is it a new so, idea? So I really do want to split up. I mean, so Bosch is a cloud foundry project, right? So it's under the umbrella it's used to deploy cloud foundry in the past. But as far as cloud foundry in the past and cloud foundry Bosch, there are two separate ideas. They're completely, they, they actually don't know about each other, two different code bases. Two different teams are developing them, they're completely separate. So um, the CPI in Bosch was a concept that we developed again over 18 months ago when we started working on it. And we actually saw what we would actually need to deploy the system ourselves. And again, it, it, it is somewhat similar to some of the tools out there, but again, we really wanted to have a holistic approach to it. So, and if you have any additional questions, like that, I think in the hackathon, we'll probably spend some time on brainstorming and uh, chatting more. So, so. Thank you.